Hi guys, I'm Mark Rodriguez. And I'm Johnny Rodriguez, and you're watching the Video Game Masters. We've always been very big fans of the Dragon Ball series, but, you know, we're just casual fans, nothing too crazy. I mean, it's not like we're gonna buy any piece of crap just because it has a Dragon Ball label on it. Um, excuse me? Hey, it was in the bargain bin. Well, anyways, we're gonna talk about Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension for the Super Famicom. Wait a second, we don't have a Super Famicom. Well, that's why we have the Super Adapter. The what? Allow me to demonstrate. These are what your usual Super Nintendo game packs look like. This is what they look like when they first came out, and later on they were redesigned to look like this. Now, this is what a Super Famicom game pack looks like, and as you can see, it doesn't quite fit into the Super Nintendo so well, does it? Now, as you can see, they both look the same on the bottom, so if the game packs were shaped differently, they could fit inside the Super Nintendo without a problem. So this is where the Super Adapter comes in. It solves a problem right here. So all you gotta do is just hook up the game to the adapter, Hook it up to your Super Nintendo, and there you go, Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension on your SNES. Dragon Ball C Hyper Dimension is the fourth and final DBC fighting game for the Super Famicom. The graphics are easily the best of the series and the gameplay is faster with regular combos and juggle combos. The music could have been better, it's not really horrible, it's just there. Unlike past DBC fighting games on the Super Famicom, the light bar and key bar are the same thing, so you can charge up your life and key whenever you can. The fights are only one round because being able to recharge your life bar can make a fight take quite a while. The split screen effect from past games is gone, but you can still fight on the ground or in the air. This game lets you choose from 10 different characters. You get Son Goku, Vegeta, Gotenks, Son Gohan, and Vegito. You also get Cell, Frieza, Majin Buu, Mr. Buu, and Piccolo. This game doesn't play all that different compared to other DBZ fighting games for the Super Famicom. You still get a button for the punches, one for the kicks, one for the strong attacks, and one to shoot key attacks. You also use the L and R buttons for dashing. Besides the usual attack moves and energy blasts from other fighting games, you can do all sorts of things, like dive into the background to avoid attacks, block and counter attacks, knock people up into the air, smack them clear across the battlefield, and smack them back down to the ground. Fighting in the air is kind of weird though, all the attacks make you dash forward and the action feels very floaty. If you hit each other at the same time on the ground, you exchange blows anime style and the winner gets a free shot in. If you hit each other in the air, the view switches planes and depending on which buttons the player press, you can fire off key shots at your opponent or you can dodge them. Last but not least, like other fighting games, when your light bar finally gets flashing red, you can do death moves called Meteor Attacks. Check out Goku's Meteor Attack. <laughs> the story mode follows the events of Dragon Ball Z the best it can with the limited characters available. The first fight starts off with Piccolo fighting against Frieza on Planet Namek to buy Goku some time to finish charging up the Genkidama. You can lose some of the battles, like for example, since Piccolo didn't defeat Frieza in the series, it doesn't really matter if you lose that particular battle, but if Goku were to lose the fight against Frieza, you just continue, and you only get 3 shots at this. The fights continue until you reach the final battle against Majin Buu. After that, you get 3 extra battles in which you fight against other characters like Gohan, Gotenks, and Vegito. You can also find out one-on-one -on -one against a computer or a second player, or you can enter the Senkaichi Budokai tournament mode. Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension is a fun fighting game. It might not be as fast paced as the other games, but it's a lot faster than the past Super Famicom games. I like how they removed the split screen effect because they always slowed down the gameplay and reduced the fights into power beam struggles. I just wish the game had a hidden character or two like the past DBC games. I mean, 10 characters just didn't feel like enough. DBC Hyper Dimension is one of the best of the DBC fighting series because it plays closer to SF2 compared to the newer DBC fighting games that overcomplicate things. The game has excellent graphics for its time on a 16-bit console and the voices aren't perfect, but passable. I agree that the game needed more characters, but I also think that it needed more speed.
And that's not all, we're also going to talk about Dragon Ball C Super Goku Den Kakusei Hand. Did you understand half of what you just said? Not a damn thing. This game is also for a Super Famicom. What about that adapter, boy? Dragon Ball Z Super Goku Den Kakusei Hand is a sequel to Totsugeki Hand. While Totsugeki Hand dealt with the story from when Goku first met Bulma until he defeats Piccolo Daimao, this game starts off at the 23rd in Kaichi Budokai where Goku faces Majunior and ends when he finally defeats Frieza. The story parts deal with trivia where answering the right questions makes the story follow the course along with the manga. If you answer wrong though, the events change and some of them even lead to a quick game over. For example, here, if you answer wrong, go on with fight against Kui instead of Vegeta doing it. Now, I know the story of Dragon Ball like the back of my hand, but since this game is for the Super Famicom, it's all in Japanese, so it's a lot of guesswork for me. So what I did was write down the right answers, and then reset the game every time I got the wrong answer, and then make a list of all the right answers. Now keep in mind, this was before we had access to the internet, you could just look up the answers. We gotta do this the hard way. The fighting parts used the four buttons to do different types of attacks, or the dodge encounter to once your opponent does. The L and R buttons are to charge up your key. This isn't exactly turn based, so you have to strike before the enemy does. The fighting switches between Goku and Gohan depending on the plot, each with their own moves, like Goku's Kamehameha and Gohan's Masenko. You also have mini games in the game, like Gohan trying to avoid the dinosaur during his training, or Goku practicing joining the Genki Dama. Training battles throughout the story help build up your key and make your moves more powerful. The game even reenacts key scenes in the anime, like when Goku tossed the Genki Dama at Frieza, for example. Super Goku Den Kakusei Hen is a fun game for Dragon Ball Z fans or people beginning to get into RPGs. Honestly, the only difficult thing about this game is the language barrier. If it was on English, I would have finished this game in a couple of days. I have to admit though, it is fun to watch all the animations during the battles, especially when they reenact key scenes from the anime, and the music's pretty good too. Overall, these games are totally awesome, they're fun to play, and they're worth checking out. If you can still find them, that is. Well, yeah. Anyways, that's the end of today's episode of the Video Game Masters. I'm Mark Rodriguez. And I'm Johnny Rodriguez. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Kamehameha!